more to that. Okay, excellent. So good morning, everybody. I'm Jennifer Kim. I am the Director of Employer Engagement at the Central USC <coughs> Career Center. And um, I know that my colleague, Jen O'Connor, she just covered what your students should be doing each year that they're here at USC. Now the tables are turning and we're going to share with you what you as parents and families can do to help your student during this career journey. So we think that parents and families are the most effective partners that we have in allowing our students to go after their career aspirations and allowing them to develop um, you know, professionally. And so parents and families always rank as number one in terms of um, who students feel are the most um, resourceful or helpful in their career development. And so know that you have a lot of influence over your students, what you say, what you do as your career, influences them greatly. I'm sure you already know that, right? And so we want you to be our partners because guess what? They don't always listen to us, but they might listen to mom and dad or grandma or uncle or, or auntie. And so um, that's why we're here and we want to um, show you <laughs> a roadmap of how you help your students, right? And, and I know um, Jen covered this, but we said we were very strategic in coming up with this title. So it is navigating the, the career journey. It's not a sprint. And so sometimes we get calls from parents with seniors who are about to graduate in like two weeks. And they're like, what can you do to help my student? Because they still don't have a job. And again, that's, we will do everything we can to help the student. But again, if we can journey with you from your first, from your student's first year, all the way through when they're about to graduate, it will be so much more effective. And so, again, just wanted to reiterate that. Um, let's see. I think we can move on to the next slide. It's the right button. Wonderful. So, this is just a roadmap, again, career journey analogy. So, roadmap. Um, we're going to give you a brief overview of what our office does, and then we're going to cover our events, programs, and online resources. And again, you can find all of this on our website, but we definitely wanted to highlight a few things for you. Hey, it's finally working. All right, so a brief overview. Um, <coughs> USC is a decentralized campus. So as you know, we have 20 plus schools. And they all act as independent states of sorts. So just like the 50 states, they're very independent. And then we have some centralized services like our office, the Central Career Center, and we act like the federal government. Um, and so we try to work closely with our school-based colleagues because as you know, um, I'm sure I have parents that are representing many different schools at USC. But we have to work together, right? Just like the states work together with the federal government. And that's what we try to do. And because we believe that it makes us more effective. So think of the Central Career Center as um, generalists with a broad breadth of information, knowledge, and resources. And then our school-based colleagues, our school-based career centers, as the specialists with they have the in-depth information. And so again, when your student works with both of our offices, I think they'll be that much more effective. And so if you want to encourage your student to, to come see us as well as their school-based um, career centers, I think that would be a really good strategy. Uh, I really wanted to elaborate on the mission statement. It might be hard to see in the back. Let's enlarge the plot for next year. Um, so our mission statement at the Central Career Center is to support the diverse aspirations identities and experiences of Trojans as they seek opportunities. So I want to dissect that a little bit. So diverse aspirations. As you know, your students are very, very talented and they have very divergent aspirations. And so not everyone is gonna take the same path. Some students are very adamant that they want to get a great job that pays really well right after USC. 
and I'm sure that's what you all want as parents and families. Um, some students, they want to pursue additional education <laughs> um, and you know, hopefully on their own dime, right? Um, and, and others are very entrepreneurial. They want to start up their own startup. And, um, and so we see such um, diverse students in terms of um, their career goals and their aspirations. So we're, very, we're, we're ready to tackle that on and, and to make sure that they get to where they need to. And then uh, we, we're talking about identities. That's very important to us, right? We have students with very diverse identities and we want to support them allow them to be true to their identities, but also at the same time, achieve their career goals and develop professionally. So whether that's our minoritized students, students of color, um, our LGBTQ community, and first gen students, um, our international students. So we definitely try to um, accommodate and honor and really um, allow them to thrive in their identities as they're searching for these job opportunities. And then obviously they all have very diverse experiences. Thanks to you, I know it's it's not easy to get into USC these days, and you've helped them journey along in that journey before they even arrived here. And so again, we try to really holistically look at their experiences and allow them to express themselves via their resume, cover letter, and during their interviews. So that's what we do. And so just wanted to reiterate our mission statement. This is a website that you should all get to know. I'm a little bit biased. I'm very proud of that website because I oversee that website. And uh, there's a lot of information there. Some say maybe too much, but you know, too much information? Is that possible? I don't know. And so there's a section just for families that you could search, but if I were you, just take a quick look, look at all the resources. You're paying for a lot of those resources. Make sure your, your students are using them. We, we really do tell them until we're blue in the face, but if, you know, mom and dad or grandma, grandpa, they want to share some of these resources and say, you need to get on this or that, I think that that will be really helpful. Um, the last thing that I wanted to cover is Connect SC, and I think we have a separate slide for that. So Connect SC, get to know Connect SC. This is your main hub for everything. If your student says, what's Connect SC? That's a problem. They need to know what Connect SC is. And what this is, is it's a comprehensive job posting portal that this is where you request career advising appointments, sign up for mock interviews. This is where you register for recruiting events, including our on campus recruiting programs. And so this is where it all happens. And this is where they get access to exclusive resources that other students cannot access unless you're a USC student. Because on the website, everyone can access it, right? But this is where we sort of hide our best resources for our children. And so, um, like I said, if you don't remember anything, remember Connect SC. It is powered by Simplicity, our vendor, and um, you'll find it very helpful. And, and I do get questions from parents, you know, Connect SC account? And the answer is no, because this is for students. But if you are going to post jobs as an employer, we can give you an account. So there's an incentive for you to sign up or post a job and connect us seat. I wanted to quickly go over our on-campus recruiting program. And this year I put virtual slash on-campus because right now it's a hybrid. So yesterday we had some employers come on campus, but for the most part this fall, because of the pandemic, we have hosted our on-campus recruiting virtually. And it has worked out really well for our students um, and our employers, but in the spring, we're hoping to, again, move to a more in-person programming. And um, we, but we also have to, you know, definitely honor our employers that just want to do things virtually. So we'll offer both. But again, we're going to lean towards um, hosting these events in person. And so the on-campus recruiting program is held once in the fall and in the spring, and these are the dates right now. So now through November 19th, and then from January 26th to April 15th. So how many of you are first-year parents? Okay, that's what I thought. I would figure a majority of you. So 
but I don't stress out your 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 um your students this semester. Let them get acclimated, but definitely starting like winter break when they're whole, you kind of bring them a little bit about Connect SC and say, hey, have you been I don't know applying to jobs or internships on Connect SC, and then maybe encourage them to do on-campus recruiting in the spring. Um, I think that that'll be really great in terms of summer opportunities for them. Um, again, this is where we um, are, allow our students to interview for full-time salary positions, as well as paid internships. So for this program, we do not allow any employers who have unpaid opportunities to participate. We do allow them to, I know, to, I, right? You want your, your students to get paid. Um, Job postings, that's a different story because we post thousands of jobs, um, hundreds of jobs per day. So it's not a lack of opportunities. Um, so for job postings, we want to give our students as much of a breadth of opportunities as possible. Um, but definitely for a formal program like this, we only allow paid opportunities. I was wondering, yes. how did you um, screen out or select the company that Yes. So students do mostly apply because they don't know much about the mm -hmm. market, right? So. Yeah. So the one way we filter is if it's paid or not. So that's one way. Um, we definitely do not allow any of you know businesses or um, organizations with an illegal business purpose, right? So for example, I know the cannabis industry. Um, it is legal in California, but not federally. And so we don't consider that a legal um, business purpose. So we do not allow cannabis um, industries to recruit for this reason, because although USC is a private school, we get federal funding. And so we need to be very mindful of federal law because we don't want to cut off any federal funding. So that's just one example. But in terms of um, screening for quality, I think that, that we need to teach students how to do that for themselves because they can't apply to every job out there, right? Because again, every day we have hundreds of jobs that get posted in Connect SC. And so we teach them how to look for fraudulent jobs, how to look for employers that maybe don't align with their you know, ethics or their professional goals. And we teach them how to filter on their own. And I think we want to empower students because maybe for one of your students, they, you know, maybe one particular type of opportunity is the wrong fit. But for another one, for another student, that may be the perfect fit for them. And so for us, again, um, we allow the as many employers to recruit, but we do, we're, we are very vigilant about um, fraudulent jobs. Um, employers with like bad reputations online, things like that we do definitely filter for. But in terms of, you know, political leanings or ethics, all of that, that's just way, it, that's just such a gray area and a slippery slope. And so again, we teach students to um, filter on their own, um, if that, okay. And then lastly, we host Trojan class for information sessions. And the information sessions take um, form in many different ways. So for example, we can have networking events, we also have coffee chats, or you can have a traditional information session where the company um, representative or the organization um, representative comes up just like me and then gives a PowerPoint, tells students what their uh, organization is all about. And um, that has worked out very well. We host over 200 children talks per year. And so um, definitely encourage students. This isn't um, an interview. If they just want to learn a little bit more about a particular industry or a particular organization, this is the best way to come and learn. Um, so encourage your first year students, second year students, master students, um, anyone that's interested in a particular industry or, or organizations to come, because I think that will definitely give them an advantage one, if they decide to recruit with that particular employer. Okay. So we have some upcoming fairs. 
Okay, there is a question right there. Oh, sorry. Yes. Sure, sure. Great question. So, um, most employers recruit in the fall. And actually, our busiest recruiting season is September. So, it has sort of passed. But that's why I said you for, for your first year students, it's okay. They just got here, right? They need to acclimate. You need to give them some time. So, for first year students, I would say start in the spring. Do on campus recruiting. Um, come to the, all the career fairs that I'm going to share with you very soon. For, um, for any other student, second year, third year, fourth, so on and so forth, they need to be recruiting all year round, to be honest. Um, but definitely get their resumes and cover letters ready to go during the summertime because on campus recruiting starts in early September. Um, but then there are some industries, for example, the investment banking industry, they start recruiting in the spring of your student's second year, so sophomore. So they recruit very, very early. So depending on the industry that they're interested in, the timing will, will vary. But again, um, it's a year round thing. Looking for a job is like having another class. They really need to devote time and they need to personalize their resumes and cover letters. I, I'm sure Jen covered this before me, but um, you can't just have a generic resume or cover letter. I'm gonna try to go, I, I'm, go I, I'm so sorry, I'm, to make sure we have enough time, I promise I'll get to all your questions at the end. I'm happy to stay. If you're willing to stay and give up lunch or be late to lunch, um, so I'm going to try to move on, but, and then, but hold your questions, and then we'll answer them at the end. So um, I'm sure the, most of the uh, families here are not interested in this, but the Graduate School's virtual fair is coming up in October 20th. And so again, for those students who are pre-med, pre-law, or they want to get their master's in engineering, encourage them to come to this event, because we have top universities and top programs across the country in fact, across the globe, attend this event. And so if you have students that are interested in going to graduate school, this is the event to be at um, in two weeks. We have for our first year parents and families, so there's a virtual internship fair coming up November 10th. And so maybe this is a time to encourage your first year students to attend this. But again, this is like right before finals start. So they might not be in the right mindset. So Mention it, share it with them, but you know, give them a little bit of space again because this is your first semester. Um, our upcoming fairs next year. I want to quickly go over them. So, how many of you are from the East Coast? Oh, a lot, many. Okay. So for for our East Coast families and students, we have the Career Internship Connections Fair. Usually, it's in New York, right in the middle of Manhattan. And it's during winter break so that when your, your students are visiting you, they can attend this in-person fair. Because of the pandemic this year in 2022, we're going to still host it virtually and the date is TBD, but it will be updated on the website if you want to check back on the date. For all of the parents here and all the families here, make sure your students come to the spring career fair. This, it's early February, it's, um, it's in the beginning of the semester, there really is no excuse not to come to this event. <laughs> and as even as first year students, you want your students to start looking for jobs or at least get their feet wet and talking to employers so that they can learn how to network or do table talk. You know, even for us, I, I don't know about Laura, but I have to practice these presentations. And, you know, I sometimes do mock interviews myself because even though I preach it and I can tell you what a you know, perfect interview looks like, for me to do it myself, I make mistakes. And so it's best for students to really just dive in there and, and, and you know, really start talking to employers at an earlier stage so that when, it, when, it time, when it's time to really turn it on and get that job, they're ready to go. So it's good practice 
if if it's not for you know for the real thing. And then we also have a, another fair in April. It's called the Recent Graduates and Students for Fair. So this is just this is we call it the just in time fair. So for our seniors who procrastinated right before they graduate, we put on the last fair for them. And then again for first year, or second or third year students that that procrastinated in getting their summer internship, we do have host this um, fair for them. And then how many of our parents are, or families are from around the globe? Somewhere outside of the US. All right, <laughs> international parents. Okay, so we have our international students career fair in the fall and it will, that one I think will remain virtual just because we want to allow as many global companies and institutions to recruit through USC, but that is coming up. And again, this is all sort of in line with um, our mission to help students with diverse identities. And so there is that. And then the biggest recruiting event of the year that no one should miss going forward is the fall career fair and that's September 15th of 2022. So as I mentioned, in terms of timeline, most organizations recruit in the fall. So you don't want your student to miss out on fall recruiting. All right. Okay, so I will turn the mic over to my colleague, Lauren, um, who will talk a little bit more about specialized programs. I think I'll probably talk. Can you hear me in the back? Wonderful. All right, I want to make sure everyone can still see it, so I'll be over here. So hi, nice to see you. Some of you saw me in the hallway. My name is Lauren Ostendorf, and I'm the Associate Director of Internship Engagement. And so what that is, is basically helping out with all these different specialized programs. I know in the back it's hard to read some of them, so I will be speaking about all of them, and we'll certainly take questions a little bit later. Um, the way that we have these specialized programs is broken down in a number of different capacities. We have them for fall and spring versus summer, but something that certainly your students can look forward to is our I3 event. It's known as Investigate Industries and Internships. It's gonna be happening in January. And why this program is so unique is that specifically it allows students to attend a panel session that's industry-based. And then we have eight to 10 employers who are gonna come in and speak about the organization, what they're looking for in candidates, and then share what it takes to be successful within that particular industry. If a student likes what they hear in the panel, they can then participate in the networking session. They can bring their resume. They can do little pre-screening interviews. Every single time we offer this program, we see students who are then converting these initial discussions into interviews and then internships and then turning those internships into full-time positions. It's an amazing pipeline. We typically are looking at bringing in organizations that are involved in e-commerce, entertainment, nonprofit, any of those industries. And we're actually gonna be meeting a little bit later today to determine those industries. So that information will be posted up on our website, but the timing for that is in January. Also wanted to share about our mentor program. It's our first generation mentor program and it's a year long. The way that we deem first generation, if you're the first in your family to go to college, then you make up this population. It's about 22% here at the university. And what we wanna do is connect first generation students with those who are first generation alumni. So we know that there's a pretty high number that are here on campus. And what it does is it walks them through a series of programs through, uh, from October through April. Everything from what can you do to update your resume to building that elevator pitch, then networking specifically at the career fair. So just allowing them that a little additional guidance so that's something we've been doing this program in a little bit different capacity the last year, just due to virtual, um, but it's been exciting because where it used to be only helping about 30 students, we're helping about 130 students each year. Does that mean what happens to the other students who are not a part of this first generation population? There is another program for that and I will be speaking about it, but just wanted to draw or highlight that information since it is one of our specialized opportunities. So that's what's going on during the school year. These next programs are summer options. So for summer 2022, and all their application deadlines are still available. So the first is our Global Fellows Internship Program. If you have a student that's interested in living and working in Asia during the summer, that's part of a funded program so that it, all expenses taken care of, unless you wanna do some additional travel, I would highly recommend that your student check this out. Um, this has been going on since 2001. For the last two summers, we have switched it to a virtual piece. 
but we still wanted to make sure the students were gaining that cultural awareness in addition to professional and career development. Um, with this program, it's a little bit of a you know, strenuous application process, but the student would be filling out an online application that's due December 1st. They would go through a series of interviews in January, and then we select them for the program by February 1st. Where this program is unique is that we actually select the students first and then place them in internships. So we're looking for those students that are adaptable, flexible, looking for a unique experience. Um, I'd say in the last five years, we've probably seen students who are typically younger in their academic pursuit. So you're thinking, why well, have a first year student? Are they eligible? Absolutely. The last year that we had students go in person, we had six different first year students. And even over the last you know, two virtual terms, we've had a number of first years. So don't have your first year students count themselves out because you feel like they're not qualified. That is not the case at all. I did an informational session for this program earlier this week, and that information is available on our YouTube channel so that the students can still access it. Um, but again, we pay for the housing, we pay for the airfare, we place them in an internship, and it's a unique experience. Of course, I know as parents are probably thinking, is it gonna happen? What are we looking at? We have a globalization office that is monitoring it, and we will continue monitoring it up until that point. But again, we're trying to move forward and see what is necessary. So that's what we're planning. Quick question about it. Which countries? So great question. So specifically, we're focusing on Southeast Asia. We had students last time participate in Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Taiwan. We are, again, looking at not only just the health and safety, but also the political situation. So once we select the students by February, we will then take a look at where things are within each of those countries to make sure it is safe. Because absolutely, I do not want to send your student there knowing I'm going to be receiving parent phone calls. All right. Next up, then scholarships. If you choose not to do the Global Fellows Program, we do have two scholarship opportunities, and I'm going to discuss both of them. The first one is our, well, let me first say, for these scholarships, they reward funding to students who have unpaid summer internships. The first one is our USC Dream Dollars Program. So if your student gets an unpaid summer internship for at least six weeks at either a nonprofit or a government agency, they can then receive a stipend of $1,500. What we want to do is continue to allow students to pursue their passion. We know that there's certainly students who are working in investment banking and consulting and all these other entities, but, and those are typically paid very well, but what about those on that other side? So it's a great opportunity. Um, the application deadline is not until April. So we put that piece there because we want the students to secure the internship first. And as long as they do it ahead of schedule, meaning before, their spring semester is over, they could then be rewarded with the scholarship. Question in the back? Is that money only available to them if they don't have, if they have to for housing and such, or what's the other chance of that? That's fine. So the question was asking specifically um, about receiving the funding. So they get to receive the funding and spending it, spend it how they want to. So we have students who decide to live in LA and it goes to housing. We have other students who are at home and then have the funding go to transportation and food expenses. Um, gas, insurance, all those fun things that certainly do add up, but it goes directly to the student for those purposes. Then, as a continuation really of our first generation mentor program, we have our first generation scholarship. So if you're first in the family and you have an unpaid summer internship, again for six weeks, but in any industry, you then are eligible for a scholarship of up to $2,000, goes through a very similar process. So at least there are some additional scholarship options available. If you are looking for additional funding sources, USC has a website called Scholarship Universe. It is where all the scholarship opportunities are on. It's eligible for both undergrad and grad students and would certainly encourage you to encourage your student to pursue that. There's no parent login. However, your student should be able to have full access to that. So here's a little quick snapshot into some of the specialized programs. Now I get to talk a little bit about online resources. So Jennifer already introduced Connect SC and all of its amazing capacities for internships, jobs, on-campus roles. But then when we have all the good stuff as far as some of those different resources, that's what I'm gonna be speaking about. This is actually a quick snapshot of what it does look like. For those in the back, I'll read the categories just so you have a better idea, but it goes home and then jobs and internships, public profile, documents like resume, cover letters, um, reference sheets, 
Then the events, so all those different Trojan talks, our signature events like career fairs, and then any of the workshops that our office puts on. We have interviews. So when Jennifer was speaking about the on-campus recruiting program, whether it's virtual, hybrid, or in-person, that information's there. Advising appointments, should your student want to meet with someone, it's all managed through that piece. And then a list of the employers, different credentials, surveys. But what I'm going to speak about is near the bottom under resources. And these are resources that are going to help your student get to that point to be able to know what industry do I want to pursue. Now that I know the industry, how do I go about and finding opportunities that are available, not just locally here in Los Angeles, but seeing from the show of hands, those who are you know, on the East Coast or even international, that's a way that you can do so. And also in prepping for the interview. So this is another fun one that parents usually or family members like to take a picture of, but this is how we've broken it down. Again, in order to have access to all of these subscriptions, it has to be through Connect SC, specifically through the online resources. So first off, for industry and organizational guides, we do have our career access resource library, known as the CARL system. You actually don't need to log into Connect SC for this one. If you just go to carl.usc.edu, you will have full access to it. It allows you to do a category search. So do you want to search specifically by industry? Maybe you want to go in and see what are some of the resources for graduate schools or fellowships or internships or international internships. That's an amazing resource that you are not blocked from. So again, that website is carl, C-A-R-L dot U-S-C dot E-D-U. Then the next one is called First Hand. If you're familiar with vault.com, uh, recently First Hand acquired them and they've got an amazing guide to industry resources. These are the ones that Every year the students will come in and say, who are the best employers or what are the best industries or who has the top internships? This is a guide that we absolutely rely on. And this is where you would need to have access through Connect SC, but it's an amazing resource. There's research that's being conducted on a yearly basis in order to update this information. And so depending upon what industry, whether your student wants to be an actuary or in your, in um, uh, let's say engineering, in law, you name the industry, It'll break down what are some of those top organizations, why it has deemed them as top organizations. Is it because of that conversion from internship into full-time role? Is it because of the mentorship opportunities? Is it because they're DE&I resources? Whatever it may be, it breaks that information down. And we have continually been giving out this resource. Um, it's probably one of my favorites and would highly recommend that your student check that out, especially when they're really just first trying to have a better understanding of what industry should I pursue with that major. If you're thinking, my student's not even there yet, we need to take a step back. That's where I recommend this last one, connecting majors to careers. This is one of my favorite resources because it breaks down hundreds of different majors and then can show kind of what those possibilities are. A lot of times when we're working with maybe some of our liberal arts students, we have this English student that comes in and says, I'm an English major, what am I gonna do with it? Within this career or within this portal, it will actually say, okay, as an English student, then do you want to try to go into advertising and marketing? Do you want to go into, let's say, pre-law? Do you want to go into, I mean, you name it. It breaks it down into all the different areas that maybe you haven't considered. From there, it talks about the specializations, and it takes it even a step further and will start to suggest different professional associations that these students can look into to think about, okay, is this where I could see myself pursuing a career later on? It's an amazing resource. Anytime I've sat down with a student and walked them through this and have shown them this guide, they're just like, oh my gosh, I never even thought of this. You can see everything just starts working and it then will allow them to move from that piece to then the vault guides and then everything else. So highly recommend it within those online resources. Next up, once they know about the industry and how they're gonna be pursuing it, I want to show you what are going to be some additional resources to see those listings. Certainly Connect SC has thousands of different opportunities, but I wanted to highlight a few of the industry specific options. The first one is art search. This is for our students who are typically um, looking for those art opportunities, but not just locally, internationally. So art search is really great. We see a lot of students from either our architecture school, Roski, and more of the creative programs. That's that great listing. If you were to go to any of these sites just through the general website, it's going to say, what's the subscription? Again, go through Connect SC and you'll have full access. For our students who are interested in music opportunities, there's Bridge Worldwide Music Connection. 
And you don't have to be from the Thornton School of Music to have access to this. Again, we're the main career center. These resources are for all students. For those who are interested in more of the environmental or sustainability careers, we've got the environmental career opportunities, followed by the opportunities in the public affairs. So again, and this is just a small sampling of some of our more widely used programs. But I also wanted to talk about some location specific options. So specifically, we are a part of a consortium with 11 other schools called UCAMP. It's the University Career Action Network. The other schools are Harvard, as well as Princeton, Tulane, Wake Forest. Um, I'm actually a part of that group. And basically, we are pulling together a number of different listings because we recognize students just don't want to be in Los Angeles. They want to go back home. They want to go international. And it's through this consortium that we're doing this virtual internship fair on November 10th. So something to check out there. We also have the Going Global option, which is another portal for listing different internship and part-time work options. What's great about Going Global is that for any of the students who are thinking of going internationally or even seeing what would it take to prepare some of the cultural advice or what are some of the things that maybe I want to anticipate because I've just been preparing for work in the US versus other places, Going Global is an amazing resource. And it also lists H-1B information for international students to see where have other international students gotten opportunities. All right, last big piece. They've done all this research, but now they need to prep for the interview. Would highly recommend these two different resources. Big interview is one of my favorite ones because not only does it speak specifically about industry, it'll also go through graduate school options. The student can record it. They can send it to you as a family member. They can send it to a mentor. They can send it to whomever. But either way, I even say send it to yourself because sometimes we're our own worst critics, right? We look at it, are we talking too much with our hands? Are we playing with our hair, tapping the pen? Whatever it may be, utilize big interview. And then for those students who are gonna be taking on case interviews. So whether they are pursuing investment banking, consulting, or maybe something within the MBA world, I wanna highly recommend case questions interactive. I know I've spoken a lot, any questions? All good? All right, moving right along. Now the Trojan Network. So for those of you who are thinking, I love the concept of that first generation mentor program, but my student's not a first generation student, this is the alternative. This is an amazing platform that students not only can connect with one another, and this is something that we turned on during the pandemic just so that they could still have that sense of connection, but this is where our students are connecting with alumni. These alumni have all opted into the platform. So where some people go to LinkedIn and try to make that connection, and they end up waiting and it's kind of ignored. This is a platform where the alums have said, yes, I want to connect with, with other Trojans either X amount of times per month, and that's then managed on the back end. But either way, this is a great resource. So notice it looks a little bit like LinkedIn, but for all of those alums, it would show hopefully their picture if they've loaded it and then where they're working. And it allows the student to start a chat now instantly on the spot, or they can send a message to help them with that communication. Because sometimes it's hard just getting them to this platform, but to help them with that dialogue of like, where do you start off? There are templates that are set up to help with, do you want to do just a basic networking conversation? Do you want to learn a little bit more about job shadowing or something like that? It's an amazing platform. It does allow the students to build their profiles to specifically highlight their major, their permanent locations, um, any of their identities and manage within that. And in addition to our first generation mentor program, there are a few of our academic units that have their own specific programs set up on the platform as well. So something that students should be taking advantage of. This is something that they'll have this account as a student and then it transitions over to an alum. So for those who are maybe in their third or fourth year and thinking, oh, is it too late to sign up as a student? Absolutely not. It's never too late. We really want to make sure everyone is a part of the Trojan network because we hear all about the Trojan family and you know people staying connection, staying connected. This actually works. So highly recommend that. All right, I promise we're coming up to the end, but what can you do? There's a lot of different options. And let me pass it back to Jennifer. Okay. Um, this is something that we certainly wanted to make sure that you knew about. Obviously, here for Trojan Family Weekend, in order to learn a little bit more about the campus and the resources available to your students. But we also wanted to showcase some of these great opportunities because you might think, you know what? I heard about all those great options that Jennifer spoke about. And what I'd like to do now is think about posting jobs on Connect SC. That's a great way to get started with it. Um, certainly whether it's posting jobs, 
internships, participating in on-campus recruiting, Trojan fairs, or tro excuse me, Trojan talks, career fairs, combined it, or combined it there, we've got that. But also we have our Trojans Hiring Trojans campaign. And this is an amazing opportunity. Um, it's something that we, you know, everything is Trojan themed at this point. So um, it's something that you can certainly make that notation within your Connect SC profile. And so we love to see that legacy continue. Any last comments? So things that you can do for your students versus others and beyond. So with that, I will go ahead and open it up for questions. However, I do want to share a last slide because we have additional information and we know that your students are on social media, but wouldn't it be great to know about all these events in real time? Certainly follow us. We're probably the most active with our Instagram and our blog, very timely articles that typically are then connected to that. Um, but we also know as families, you're on Facebook and YouTube and all of that. So with that, we'll let you take pictures and I'll pass it back to Jennifer so that we can answer some questions. And don't feel bad if you need to leave. Um, some of you have been here for two hours. And so feel free to leave. Um, but yes, we could definitely take questions now. Yes. And How does the handshake Sure, great question. So, wow, we knew about handshake. All right. So, Simplicity is our main hub, as I said, but we also attained handshake um, over a year ago just because we wanted to increase opportunities for our students. And we get literally hundreds of jobs there, post, you know, posting there every day. And so, um, we think of it as a supportive, like, hub. So like another indeed.com, but for, for USC students. So, um, but if you're a Marshall undergrad student, then, then Handshake is like your simplicity. Connect but, SC. Right, or Connect SC. But for everyone else, um, it's sort of just another job portal for our students to explore additional opportunities. So great question. Um, I don't know how you knew about Handshake, but great. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Where did you say the slideshow would be available? The QR code is outside. So it's part two, and we posted it on this wall. And uh, we also will share the recording for this. We just recorded everything. We'll share that with the administrative office that put this event together so that all of you who signed up for this session and Jen's session before will make sure that you get the recording. Um, because I know there's a lot of parents and families that did not get in. Um, so we feel very bad about that. And we'll make sure that everyone gets a copy of this report. And I know there were some students here too. So good for you that you're here with your parents. Yes. Uh, where about the visa? How can get the working visa for international? That is, you need to contact the Office of International Services and it, um, acronym OIS. And so, um, yes, you have to connect with them and they'll tell you everything about CPTs, OPTs, H1B, um, all the immigration law issues. You, you would have to work with that office. What, what, what's the name of the office? It's Office of International Services. Office of International OIS. If you put OIS USC, it'll come up. Yes. Those events in January and February. Yes. Are they gonna are they gonna be for the that summer? Will they be for the summer and because I heard there's some in September that are in past right. summer as well. Right. So we had our big career fair in September of this year, but in the spring, um, it could be for full-time jobs for our seniors or graduating students, and definitely internship. So for our uh, any other student that's looking for a summer program. The spring career fair is a great opportunity. Yeah. Spring, but you said it's year round, so there's still things that you can do now for. Of course, exactly. So there was that internship fair that's coming up in November. He can, they can always look for jobs in Connect SC or Handshake or there's one thing I did want to mention is that uh, right now there's only 15 of us at the Career Center. And we serve 48,000 students. So obviously we can't meet with every single student one-on-one, -on -one, but we have great technology platforms where you can access our services 24 seven. 
So make sure, so we talked about big interview, we talked about um, Trojan Network, all of these, they're, they're, you're paying for them, right? We're paying, we're paying these platforms a lot of money to service our students and alumni. So make sure your student utilizes them because again, we're all paying for it. So we might as well use them. And they're great, they're very helpful. Okay, thank you. So are you suggesting that you're a sophomore that you should be um, interviewing now for your summer internship, correct? Um, ideally, yes, I would love for sophomores to start recruiting in the fall, but it's not, it's never too late. Sophomore has plenty of money. So maybe they missed the fall career fair. That's okay. We have the you can internship fair coming up in November. We have the spring career fair coming up in February. We have the CIC fair that's virtual that's coming up in January. So if they want to start now, it's never too late. It's never too late, but we also we also want to get our students a head start. So it's easier for them. And the more experience you build on your resume, the easier it is for you to get that postgraduate job. And I know that's all what you guys all want, right? You want you're, you're investing a lot of money for your students to come to USC. And I know that you want them to graduate with a job or go to grad school, <laughs> right? And so that's what our office does is to really encourage them and journey alongside with them because it is a journey. It's a, it's a long road, right? It's a marathon. And we want them to be jazzed and energized each year, just like Jen went through so that they don't burn out or they don't feel like they're on emergency mode, you know, again, the semester of that they're going to graduate. We don't want that. That's very stressful. But most companies, when are the, when you find most companies, when are the applications due for, um, for summer internship? For instance, my company, January 1, you don't have your application in. Right. Or in the summer, yes. you, you can't apply. Right. So yes. that's why I was just wondering, is that true with a lot of companies that really- It really to... depends. So I have to say for most of our larger institutions, they have very rigid deadlines that end sometimes in October or November. Um, and then we have some mid-sized or smaller organizations because they can't predict their hiring needs that far in advance. They won't know until the spring right before the summer internship is going to begin. So it really varies on the employer type, um, employer size, and for your particular organization, their deadline is January 1. But honestly, it's all over the map. And that's why students have to pay attention to the deadlines and make sure they apply ahead of time. But if you have a great resume and a like a template cover letter ready to go, which they're gonna personalize for every employer, then it makes it a lot easier. So help them get organized, you know, save each, you know, create folders for each employer, make sure, because right now, you, if you don't personalize it and you just like send a generic color letter, it's, it's just, it's out the door, to be honest, because employers are like, oh, it's, to, you know, to whom it may concern, to whatever company. No, you need to spend time, just like if you were an employer, if you saw that type of application, would you consider that applicant? So targeted, personalized um, application materials get you in the door, but for you to land that job, you have to master the art of interviewing. Interviewing takes a lot of skill sets and practice, so maybe you can be the mock interviewer. You know, just grill, just grill them, right? Make them feel uncomfortable. Let let the you know the nervous jitters like just come out. Have them feel confident. You know, looking at you in the eye and have them practice. That's really, I mean, like I said, application materials get you in the door, but what's going to get you that job? What's the interview? Interview very important. So use big interview. <laughs> Make sure your student utilizes. It's wonderful. Um, very helpful. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. You should all go eat lunch. And then QR codes if you want my PowerPoint. This recording. Thank you. <laughs>
Thanks for coming.